This is a foot and it's one of a pair that's been donated to me from one of my followers in the centre of New Zealand. Her horse was euthanised, he was reasonably old and he'd had quite a big competition life. He'd been shod all his life and she was very kind to donate the feet to me. Well, I've got to admit I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone because it's a shod foot, because they look so different to me compared to a bare foot. And some of the differences that I see in a shod foot is that this part round here, it looks quite sharp because it looks as though this wall has been flattened off to take the shoe. So we have quite a sharp area around there. Also that the frog is poking down lower than the sole. And if the shoe's on here, then that's going to lift this whole foot up by the, 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 the width of a shoe so this frog wouldn't be touching the ground. But looking at it from here, if I just get it to the side there, you can see it's actually protruding down at the apex um, a little, and a little bit further back from the apex. And the sole is, is quite flat through here. It's not concave. And this part here looks to me to have been knifed back. I, I think I can see knife marks in here. I'm not quite sure why that would be. This side looks like it's exfoliating. And the bars coming down here, they look like they've been taken back here and here. Now, the other thing is that the hoof wall is pretty thin around here. It's very thin here. I can see where the white line would be and it's pushed in a little. This width of hoof wall is about probably just, just about half a centimetre wide. And also on this side, it's, it's pretty thin. Now I'm not quite sure why it would be so thin, but when I look at the actual exterior of this hoof wall, I can see that there's quite a bit of raspin that's gone on. And the raspin has gone on right up to here. Now, I don't know why that has occurred. I'm quite intrigued to see how much raspin has gone on. And it, it looks like it's the probably the coarse side of the rasp. It's a bit hard to tell, but I can see quite clear rasp marks all over this hoof surface. So does that mean that the hoof wall had been rasped to remove flares? And by doing that, it then means that it's actually going to thin the hoof wall and that's why it's looking so thin. But even apart from that, there's a significant amount of foot here. I mean, it's actually really quite high in the heels and I'm not used to seeing it looking like that. Now, it does look as though the toe has been, I think they call it dubbed, where it's been um, rasped off at the front because it's coming down and then it's going in. And I'm not sure whether that it occurs to rasp the foot back to the shoe or whether this is to try and improve the breakover by bringing the toe back. Another thing that really does stick in my mind is the shape of the coronary band. We would expect this hairline to be straight and you can see just where I've put my probe it actually lifts up here and then goes back down again. So to my mind I'm thinking if I follow those tubules up to where we've got this part that's going up, where I think that the tubules are shunting up into the coronary band, it means that this part here was a little bit too long. And maybe in the next shoeing, a little bit would have been taken off here to allow these tubules to relax down. I'm not sure, but that just seems a little odd to me to have that shape through there. And it's the same on the other side. In fact, it's even more on this side. And the other thing about it is that the hair seems to be more sticky out around here. And an old farrier told a, a friend of mine that sticky out hair means that there's pressures. There's pressures going on and that's why the hair is sticking out. And he called it angry hair, which I thought was a quite good term. And here you can see that it, it really is quite a big curve through there. Now, I wouldn't like to say that the hills were under run. I mean, I don't think that they're actually that bad. And there seems to be quite a significant amount of caudal foot here, meaning the back of the foot. So I'm really not sure what I'm gonna find in here. I think I'm gonna find quite a substantial digital cushion meaning a big one, 
because I'm seeing quite a bit of foot at the back and this distance through here, but I'm not sure that it's going to be a very strong digital cushion because the, the horse was shod and perhaps the frog wouldn't have had enough pressure when released from the ground because it was lifted up off the ground, but we'll see. Now, I, I said that I thought the heels weren't shunting forward, but when I look carefully at the tubules, I can actually see a bit of a kink. So they're coming down here and at that point here, then they kink off. So I'm thinking that there is some sort of distortion going on in the back part of this foot. Now, I'm not a trimmer or a farrier, so I don't know how this would be corrected, but I can only explain what I'm seeing and what I think is happening. So I do think that there's some shunting going on with these tubules at this point here. I think that maybe that the hoof has got too long at this point down here and it's shunted these tubules up and it's causing this lift up through here. And then when I look at it from the side and I look very carefully, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually bulging out a little bit here. It's not straight down. So again, to me, it's as if there's too much pressure from the bottom and it's allowing this to bulge. And at the front here, it's very, very thin. There's hardly any hoof wall at this point here. And just here is where the clip would be at the front. So that's the, the, that's the point that's been taken out for the toe clip. Not a lot has come out there, but I can see some significant wear at the front here. Now, I don't know if it's wear. I can actually see the holes in the tubules there. If I zoom in, you'll get to see that. Yeah, I think you can see quite nicely there. All these little dots here, these are the ends of the tubules, like lots of straws. So I'm not sure whether this has been rasped and then it's actually worn down itself because there are rasp marks through here, but they seem to have also worn down as well. So I'm wondering if the horse is dragging its toe. This was a front foot. Now I think I can historically see a few lines through here, but nothing major. But I'm wondering if the rasp has taken off the lines so we can't really see the history of what's been going on. But in all fairness, this hoof wall is, is pretty good in terms of it's not all breaking away around here. And I see that a lot in a lot of shod horses where the, the wall just breaks away and it's really hard to keep a shoe on. Now the history I have on this guy is that he, the owner wanted him to go barefoot in his retirement, but he was just too sore on the ground. And so she thought the kindest thing to do was to keep him in shoes. And that's what she did. So when I received these feet, they still had the shoes on. Looking at this little bit round here, there does seem to be a bit of an event line going around here. And that curve is quite pronounced. And so, although I don't want to say these are underrun heels, because they are, they, they are standing up pretty well, really, compared to others, others that I've seen, there is a distinct curve going on around here so there does seem to be some distortions in the back of the foot so here are both of the feet from mr m the two front feet so this is the right this is the left and so this is the one that i did the first video on to, uh, to try and describe what i could see so this is the one that i haven't looked at yet so let's have a quick look at this one and then we can have a look at both of them together this foot shows very similar characteristics to the other foot Although I think that this is a little bit more far run forward than the other one, which was a bit more upright. Now, it does look as though that the front of the foot here at the toe has been rasped back, so, so dubbed back. And there is a lot of rasping going on on the exterior of the capsule. And again, we're seeing this lift in the hairline, which is, seems to be more exacerbated through this part here. And if I take the tubules down, it means this part here in the foot. Let's just have a look at the other side. This side doesn't seem to have the, the height in one sort of place, but we do seem to just have that circular effect through there. 
Now on the other foot, it looked as though the rings were a little more diverging at the back. And I can't really see that with this one. I think the problem we've got is that there is so much rasping gone on, it's really hard to actually see where the rings are. But let me just point out a couple for you. I think we can see that there's a ring through here. So if I follow that round, that's coming round here and it's coming to about here. Uh, it's disappearing really at that point. Might be able to see it better in the video, but it's very difficult in real life to see where that is. But the point of it is that it's it's coming round and then it's it's curling down quite a bit through there. And I suppose my question would be, is, is this truly divergent growth rings where they are much closer together at the toe area and more further apart at the back, meaning that there's more growth at the back and so you get this change in the distance between the two growth rings being wider at the back than at the toe. Lots of comments have said that this is probably a laminitic foot or it's going to be mild founder which I think is the same word for laminitis, and that I should be able to feel the tip of the coffin bone, the crest of the coffin bone. But the problem is, is that because this is frozen, it's really difficult for me to actually feel through there. It just, it's obviously, it's like a block, block of ice, this whole thing. So what I'm gonna to have to do is really do a sagittal section to see if we do have rotation of the coffin bone away from the hoof wall. Now I tried to get an x-ray on these feet today, but unfortunately, because we're in lockdown in New Zealand, I wasn't able to. And I think that a sagittal section is gonna tell us exactly if we've got rotation of the coffin bone away from the hoof wall or not, or if we've got distal descent, meaning that the coffin bone has dropped in, into the capsule seems to be some lumps and bumps around this area here and I don't know if that's anything to do with jamming up of the tubules. I mean, there is like a lump about here and there is a bit of a, a lift in the, in the hairline through there but maybe it's just wishful thinking on my part. Maybe I'm seeing that when it's not really happening. have a look at the sole on this one. The sole is absolutely pancake flat. There is no indentation, there's no concavity in this sole. If anything, it's as if the sole has been paired away around this area here and left around here. Now maybe that could be to get the, the shoe on and that the farrier needed to take some of the sole back around here in order to place the shoe. One thing I'm not sure about is this seat of corn. If you look around this area here, it looks quite odd. Now, when I say odd, what I mean is it's like, it's like there's something in there. I don't know if this is dirt or if it's uh, overgrown sole or what it is, but it's, a really strange colour. It's a, it's a, a, a brownish colour. I'm just trying to dig it out a little bit because, oh yeah, it's, it's coming apart. I think it could just be that because this is frozen, it might just be muck that's got in underneath the shoe. I'm not going to know until this defrosts and that's not going to happen because I need to do my cuts while this is still frozen. Lots of trimmers have said, where the bar should end, you get a bar crack. And sometimes I've seen it and sometimes I haven't, but in this case, I really think I can see it. If you look here, there's a distinct crack there and there's another one there. And it just so happens that they're both in exactly the same place in terms of how far down the frog. And we know that the bar should end halfway down the frog. And that's exactly where these little cracks are. So I feel quite excited about that, thinking, Bob, that must be a bar crack. Now, looking at this side here, it looks as though the sole has gone in a little bit around here, and there's quite a bit of debris that's up there between the hoof wall and the sole. The thing is, is it's, as I say, this is still frozen, so 
it's not showing me what this would look like in real life. What I'd need to do is I'd need to defrost this and then have a good poke about. But this is all coming away around here quite nicely. So I think this is just exfoliating sole around here. Now I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see some CD toe around here or white line disease in this area. I, would, I wouldn't know how deep it goes so we'll just have to have a little look at that. Again like the other foot this wall is very thin and let me let me explain what I mean by thin. When I look at other hoof walls this distance here is normally about up to a centimetre in thickness. This is probably four millimetres at that point. Around here, it's even thinner. Around here, we could be looking at three millimetres in thickness. And at the front, where we've got the toe clip, it's gone down to, gosh, it's just white line at that point. This is white line through here. So the, the wall is very thin at this point. And like in the previous foot, I think this is probably because the farrier wanted to improve the breakover. Now the other thing about this is that it's actually quite yellow. I've just put a bit of water here. I don't know that you can see that. The sole is very yellow underneath all this dirt. Now in my experience, when I've seen feet that are or bodies, horse bodies that are inflamed for whatever reason. And when I say inflamed, I know that's a bit of a loose word, but they've got other things going on like cushions or um, metabolic syndrome or other issues in their body. They tend to have this orange appearance to their feet, especially to the sole. And I've seen that quite a lot. I wouldn't like to say that there's a correlation and that inflammation within the body means that you're going to get orange feet. This is just something that I've noticed more and more as I've been looking at samples. Now, I don't always have the history for my feet, but the ones that I do have history on, there seems to be a correlation between an inflammatory issue in the horse and orange feet. This horse had had liver blood work done and kidney and the liver was fine. There was nothing to be found, but he was bordering on cushions. He started to get cushion symptoms and the, the symptoms were that, and the symptoms were that he looked, started to look obese and he had fat pads, uh, a crusty neck. And the owner felt that there was something wrong and she felt that the, the foot pain or the the lameness, she felt it was due to cushions, although the vet and the farrier felt that it wasn't. Um, and they also said they didn't feel that it was due to laminitis, but the owner felt that there was something more going on. And it was her gut feeling, but she had to be guided by her professionals. Now this horse was of a good age and it had a good life, a good competition life and the time was that this horse needed to be put to sleep. So I'm going to go and do my slices now and then we can have a look on the inside and see what we can correlate.